An understanding of anatomy is important for not only a successful surgery, but also to help prevent complications and to understand where complications are occurring and what adjacent structures they can affect when they do occur. Let's start by understanding anatomically what is the maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus is one of the paranasal sinuses. It's an air-filled cavity that sits adjacent to the nose. It's lined with respiratory epithelium and it does communicate with the nose. And we'll discuss shortly why that's very important. Second, let's understand from an anatomical point why we need a sinus lift. As dentition is lost in the posterior maxilla, the maxillary bone begins to atrophy or shrink. The maxillary sinus begins to subsequently pneumatize or increase in volume. This subsequent increase in volume coupled with the atrophy of the maxillary bone leads to an inadequate or often inadequate bone height for dental implant placement. The pneumatization of the maxillary sinus coupled with the atrophy of the maxillary bone often leads to inadequate bone height for dental implant placement and can also affect the bone width. For those reasons, that's why we often need to consider something like a sinus lift to allow for implant placement in the posterior maxilla. Now that we understand what the maxillary sinus is and why we have to perform sinus lifts to allow for implant placement, let's look at the structures that are adjacent to the maxillary sinus and understand better the anatomical territory that we will be working in. We're going to look at the sinus from an inferior, medial, lateral, superior, and posterior view. All of those points have different anatomical structures that are important and have a relationship with the maxillary sinus. The view here is going to touch on the three viewpoints that I feel are most important to understand. The view that we are seeing here is the maxillary sinus in a coronal cut. The first anatomical relationship that this highlights is that the maxillary sinus sits superior to the alveolar crest and the dentition. Oftentimes when we're performing a sinus lift, there won't be dentition present, but nonetheless, this is an important relationship to understand. It's an obvious one, but it's one that reminds us that we can be working around roots of adjacent teeth and there can be damage to roots when done improperly. The second relationship highlighted here is that the maxillary sinus sits medial to the lateral nasal wall. Again, on some level that seems common sense. However, the importance behind understanding that is that there's something called the osteomiatal complex. That is a passageway seen here that goes through the maxillary sinus to the nose. That is very important in the drainage process of the nose, and it is very important that we keep that patent and allow for proper function to prevent sinusitis and infection of the sinus, which can cause not only problems from the, for the patient from a sinus standpoint, but can cause failure of the sinus graft and subsequent implants. Third, this view shows us the relationship between the maxillary sinus and the orbit. The orbit is where the globe or the eyeball sits. This relationship is also important primarily for two reasons. One, in the presence of an active sinus infection, which can often be caused by overpacking of a sinus graft, that sinus graft can communicate with the orbit which can cause infection in the periorbital tissues in the ocular region and affect not only vision, but can pass through to the cavernous sinus and cause very serious or life-threatening infections. These are not common, but it's important to understand that relationship. If you do notice periorbital inflammation or infection to understand that that can be a result of the sinus lift or the sinus graft. Second, it's important to understand that the sinus sits just below the orbit because when doing an indirect sinus lift, a slip or uh, malfunction of instrumentation can actually pop through and penetrate into the orbit. Again, not common and shouldn't happen if done properly, and we're going to talk about how to prevent that. That is important to understand the proximity of that important structure to the sinus. The second view that we're going to see here is an axial image on CT scan uh, highlighting the maxillary sinuses. The second view that we see here is an axial image of the sinuses on CT scan. The sinuses are outlined in purple and seen here. What this view shows us is a reminder that the maxillary sinus sits anterior to the pterygomaxillary region. The pterygomaxillary region is the uh, union of the pterygoid plates, the posterior maxilla, 
the hard palate, and it separates the sinus from the infratemporal fossa. There are a lot of major structures and vessels that lie in this region, but none that should be encountered as long as we stay within the confines of the sinus during our surgery. Last, this view shows us that the maxillary sinus sits medial to the zygoma and the zygomatical maxillary buttress, which is the union of the zygoma with the maxilla. This more than anything is just an identification point uh, during your access when you're making your bony window, ensuring that you are anterior to the union of the zygoma and the maxilla as a good guide to proper placement of your bony window.